So a few days ago, I got the speedrun world record in the PS2 like on game Vampire Knight. Uh, I thought it'd be really interesting to break down my new world record against the former world record held by Kaz. Uh, I'm going to be breaking down the run itself, as well as things like the differences in strategies and where we gain and lose time against each other and so on. Uh, so let's head on over and check it out. And we start. So one thing to note that's really interesting about this game versus a lot of other light gun games is that this game's actually timed RTA. Uh, most games like Time Crisis and stuff will actually time you in-game. Uh, but in this, there's unfortunately no such feature. So basically, runs are timed, yeah, in real time rather than in-game time. And something that I didn't realize until now is I actually had a slight hardware advantage over Kaz. I think his PS2 might be a like one of the fat models so i've got one of the slim ps2 so it may have played a difference and honestly may have been one of the reasons that i world recorded but we'll have a look into all that stuff later as well of course um this game as well uh house of the dead style you don't have like a cover like you do in time crisis um so if there's threats on the screen you have to like shoot the projectiles and whatnot um enemies as well in this game uh i think this is actually made by the same people as house of the dead uh so they, House of the Dead's a really like slow paced game, the, this one's a lot faster and the really cool thing is that all the enemies have like a weak point, which is highlighted by like a little glyph on them. You can't really see it with this first set of enemies, but you definitely see it later. Uh, usually it's around like the midsection of the head. Uh, Kaz's run as well is a one credit clear, so it is still the world record for one credit. Uh, however... I'm way more reckless, and I use more continues. This as well is a really cool mechanic. There's these townspeople who are infected with this thing. Uh, you're meant to, to save them, you like shoot it off. But again, this being timed in real time, it actually uh, plays a cutscene that wastes a lot of time. So we actually kill them to let the thing take over, uh, like take over their consciousness or whatever. And then that creates an enemy that we then kill because it's way quicker. Uh, so the first stage is super straightforward. But yeah, I don't know if you would have noticed, but um, Kaz's accuracy was way higher than mine. Um, I definitely was imploring, employing rather, a strategy of just my rate of fire being way higher, um, which I found quite interesting. Uh, you'll see it benefit certain bosses and not benefit others. Again, he doesn't use a single continue in this game. I think I used four because I was just playing really reckless. A lot of the uh, a lot of this game as well is like memorization. There's a life pickup that I got there as well. So this is what uh, like one of the first branching paths in the game. Depending on what you do, you get branching paths. If you don't kill that enemy that's got Carol in there, uh, you'll actually have to jump down and take a path that's a lot slower. Um, there's a, a lot of branching paths in this level and some in the later levels. Here as well, if you look over at my screen, we've got a these enemies jumping around on the rooftops. We actually intentionally take a hit, and you'll see Kaz do it too, because it, for some reason, doesn't spawn the next wave of enemies, which are these really annoying little goblin guys that run around, and they're really fast and really hard to hit. Um, sort of similar to, if you're familiar with Castlevania, the, the hunchbacks or whatever, like, sprint around, they're really annoying. Here's another um, branching path. This time, we're going to let Carolyn die, because we're going to jump down here, and I think this saves, like, 10 or 12 seconds. Um, it's pretty huge. The alternative is you kill both of the knights, and then you walk up the stairs and take that path. Um, then you're like running around on the rooftops for ages. You can see me trying to snipe some of these gargoyle things. But yeah, despite the hardware advantage, um, Kaz's accuracy I think is is like so much better than mine that it actually benefited him way more. Um, this one, I'm not sure why has actually saved this guy i think that might have been a mistake because i really don't think this is faster because you see he's locked into this cutscene now and i'm already at like a, a the next wave of enemies those are the enemies that i was saying uh talking about before they're just like really annoying to hit you can see kaz is having a hard time with them this game as well you can actually uh, i think typically you're supposed to reload by shooting off screen same as like house of the dead and uh elevator action and stuff um but you can use the A button on the gun con, which is really good because then you can just spam fire and reload at the same time. 
Uh, on my screen here, we've got the first boss of the game. His weak point is his head. Uh, I don't really fully understand this mechanic, but they've got like this, they've got their main health bar. And I guess it's like mini health bar, where they take, I guess, reduced damage during that. But if you drop that red health bar in time, uh, it ends up like they'll take a chunk of damage. Um, a bit weird, but yeah, this guy just sort of runs around and if he reaches you, he'll slash you. But this boss gets way harder after this little spiral staircase that, um, that I'm running up now. So yeah, this is the second phase of this boss. He will basically teleport somewhere and start running around and launch some projectiles at you. If you can kill him quick enough like I did there, he won't shoot the projectiles at all. Uh, but if you're too slow, you can see there I got uh, that projectile there. So it's actually like really tough to... Because sometimes like if you're shooting him, the projectile will actually get in the way and take one of his hits. You see there, I didn't actually get that red bar down in time. Uh, for me to deal that chunk of damage to him, so I think Kaz is slightly ahead in terms of health. I can't, I can't really tell though, so I was trying to take a moment to see. Um, but yeah, it's a really interesting boss, to be like surprising given that it's the first one in the game really. Um, this is the third phase of the boss. Here, he's got a weak point on his head again. But this boss also has some really stupid RNG based on... I think this is why we picked player 2. Because some of the positions that you end up... Like, basically, these pillars will block the boss. So I think the P2 side has a slightly better time not having the boss get stuck behind pillars. You can see as well the, uh, the, the like little model of the enemy. The, the red highlights their weak point, which for this boss is just his head. But yeah, he basically just walks at you and shoots stuff at you and it's a bit annoying. But you can kind of stun lock him if you are accurate, accurate enough. But yeah, you see how they move and then the boss sort of spawns in. Sometimes he can just spawn behind a pillar and it's really, really annoying. You've got to really carefully like angle your shots around it. But I was quite lucky. Um, yeah, you can see we're getting like wildly different positions on this boss. Um, yeah, Kaz got stuck behind the pillar there, but... Yeah, so he lost a little bit of time on that because he had to plan his shot so carefully. So I think I ended up significantly ahead here. But um, slight spoiler alert, there was actually a decent chunk of this run where I was behind. So level 1 wraps up. And you can see again, Kaz's accuracy is going to be way higher than mine. Mine's at 37. Let's see that there. 50. Unreal. Uh, stage 3 is another one that has a branching path and probably one of the hardest branching paths to like organically find. I don't think anyone would ever spot this on their own. Uh, there's some statues that you can shoot, you know, as with any like on game, there's like background stuff you can destroy and whatnot for points. Um, there's like a statue on the right and a statue on the left, and you're in like a sort of T intersection hallway. Uh, depending on if you shoot the if you shoot the right statue, you go to the right. You shoot the left statue, you go to the left. Uh, really strange. This boss as well is really annoying. These attacks, these little like fireballs, they just move in a really strange way. So you see me very carefully shoot the right statue first to make sure that I take the right path because it is way quicker. Yeah, even with Kaz's accuracy, you can see it's like, it's it's not an easy hit. Uh, this level as well also has these enemies with these uh, like flamethrower backpacks. Their weak point, it doesn't, it's not marked by that glyph, but basically if you shoot their backpack, they just explode. And there's also some really annoying enemies here that uh, they do this like little Sonic the Hedgehog spin dash kind of thing and they just f like fly around in circles and it's really annoying they're really really hard to hit um we'll see more of them later though wow kaz actually okay i didn't notice that in his um in his run he took a hit there and um, i don't think it was intentional like the other one but yeah this path a lot quicker we do have to deal more with these like fireballs which aren't present i believe rather 
I think you only get like one of them rather than two if you take the other path. But it's just so much quicker. More townsfolk, just gonna make sure that we transform them. So basically you you'll intentionally not shoot that little like infection on them. Yeah, so after we hop down here, we're gonna get some of these uh really annoying enemies. Probably the most annoying enemy in the game are these like spinny guys. I think they're either the first or second enemies you get here. Ah, oh, it's these ones, yep, yep, yep. I got pretty damn lucky with these, but they are really, really hard to hit. You can see even like Kaz, despite how good like he's he's very, very good at light gun games. He's probably the best in the world at light gun games in general. And he's struggling to hit those. I got really lucky because I was just mashing fire. Um, and that's I think that's like the, the big difference between us in this particular game is that I would I, I'm I played a lot more aggressively. Because I wasn't really going for a one credit clear or anything like that. Which unfortunately did lose me sometimes. Obviously getting hit takes time. Uh, that like animation of getting hit is slower. And also the continue screen uh, pops up for a little bit. And that's all timed too. Uh, with this being RTA. So. Uh, so coming up to the third boss for me here. This guy, he just flies around. Um, I don't really know what he does. I think he just like flies around and shoots lasers, but I unfortunately kill him before he gets to do any of his like interesting attacks. This as well is where you're going to see a lot of the difference in strategy come in. Um, my lower accuracy hurts me so much in this boss fight. Um, whereas you can see Kaz is landing all these shots. And yes, I'm shooting quicker, but if my shots aren't on target, then you know. You can see Kaz firing a lot slower, but way more accurately. And despite the huge difference in, in when we rocked up to this boss, I think I was about 12 seconds ahead. Um, we're now pretty much even. Just because Kaz is doing so much more damage. Look, he's already down to like half health. And, you know, just because my shots, my shots just aren't hitting as much as his. But yeah, it's a pretty straightforward fight other than that. Um, fortunately, this boss can take a lot of damage between the red health bars. Like that other guy, you could only really damage him when the red health bar was up. But this guy, you can definitely deal a lot more damage uh, between his attacks. So he kind of just flies around, shoots lasers. That's really it. He's a pretty straightforward boss, despite being the third one. Not any RNG or anything... The next couple of bosses have some, like, pretty game-determining RNG. And if I remember correctly, this... Uh, Kaz actually kills the boss here. I think. No, not quite, not quite. We're both about to hit away. But that accuracy does it, and I'm still dicking around. And Kaz ends up ahead. Even though I have a slight hardware advantage, and that I had such a lead early on, he's now ahead because of, again, look at that accuracy, 41 versus my 33. But yeah, such an interesting comparison. This is why I was really excited to, to sort of compare these runs side by side. Uh, stage four, if, uh, oh no, no, stage five is my favorite. Stage four is still really cool though. Um, we get introduced to the boss nice and early. He's got four phases? Or three? Oh, I guess it's, yeah, it, I'd say it's three phases. Damn, look at that hardware advantage coming through. I'm already in the level. So yeah, the, the this, uh, this stage as well, you get to see those glyph, uh, weak points a lot more. And a lot of these enemies are pretty frustrating to deal with. So yeah, this is the boss. This is kind of his main shtick for his first two phases. He splits into three different, um, 
like images of himself from what i can tell you can see like obviously you want it to be the middle one but you can kind of tell which one it is based on the way they sort of animate they just look a little bit different but yeah obviously you want the uh you want it to be the middle one every time because you're probably already shooting there Yeah, the first phase doesn't really go for too long. It's kind of just an introduction to the boss. These guys have a really, uh, really, really weak point on their on their head. These guys, similar weak point on the head. I lost so much time to these guys. Oh my goodness. I accidentally shot Carolyn there as well. There is another branching path coming up, but it's kind of weird. Um... It's way slower, and I think it's the last branching path in the whole game. So we're going to walk up these stairs, and there's an enemy at the top, if we're looking at Kaiser's screen. We get an enemy at the top, and then Carolyn screams. We look down. Oh no, she's falling. Basically, if you can kill these two enemies within seven seconds, you save Carolyn. She uh, finds her footing, and she gets back up. If you take longer than seven seconds to kill, which I think I... Did I? No, that was in my other PB. Um, yeah, you save her, and you get a shorter path. That's so weird. Oh, no, that does make sense. Okay, so he saved that one because it didn't play a cutscene. Okay. A nice little potential piece of improvement over my Because, yeah, the uh, the infection only takes one hit to kill, but usually it's way slower just because it plays, like, a little cutscene and then being like, thank you for saving me and all this shit. And like, shut up. Leave me alone. But yeah, I guess that particular townsperson doesn't um, have a cutscene attached to them. So this is phase two of the boss. And it's just the same deal as before. We're going to focus fire on the middle one. Pray that when he jumps up, it's still the middle one. I took a, yeah, I took a, um, a continue there, unfortunately. The boss just got a few sneaky hits on me. See, so this phase lasts a couple more rotations of it. And then we go into his third phase but it's basically just this you just want to try and guess right or pray that it's the middle one every time so Kaz heading into the last phase I think I'm about to as well yes I am and so this is probably the first piece of boss RNG they are like major piece of boss RNG um, he has a couple of different moves he's got this one where he summons a bunch of meteors and if you can kill him quick enough, all the meteors dissipate. Uh, he's also got to move this one where he sort of flies towards you and punches. And then he can also do this sort of sub phase where you look up in the air and he flies around. We'll see that in a little bit. Uh, the quickest one is this punching one. You want it to be the punching one every time. It's just faster. And he also moves in a more predictable pattern. It's way easier to tell. Uh, like where he's going to go so kaz is heading into the flying phase now this one's really slow um i'm not sure i feel like this isn't a like it doesn't happen at the same time every time i think you can go like way longer without this phase happening i guess i'd call it a sub phase so yeah kaz clears the boss there i'm just about to and Kaz heading into my favorite stage, stage 5. Damn, 73% accuracy. What a god gamer. Damn, 51% accuracy. I was also a god gamer. Stage 5 has a lot of... A lot of flying enemies, which is really annoying because they're just harder to hit. And the weak points aren't as clear. They're kind of like the uh, the big flying dude, the boss from stage three, but their their hit point, well, like their weak point rather, is way smaller as well. So they're just harder to hit, and a lot of the enemies move in a really like sporadic pattern. You can see there, I'm struggling with those guys up top. Any of those guys who just like flick side to side, very very annoying to deal with. So yeah, Kaz, just, again, I was telling you, like, despite my lead being so much greater at the start of the game, I think, yeah, Kaz's accuracy and um, 
a little bit of boss RNG, and he's pulled pretty comfortably ahead right now. Um, this is the recurring sort of first phase of this boss. This chick ends up being the boss at the end of the stage. She'll throw out these projectiles. You'll get somewhere between 5 and 7. Obviously, you want less, um, but they're not too hard to deal with. I say that as I take a hit. Yeah, you see her four or five times. You see Kaz got unlucky there. He got seven. Also, the patterns are seemingly random. Um, I don't think there's, you know, it, it can't be like a one of three thing. They, they seem to appear in pretty random spots. I haven't really seen recurring patterns ever. Uh, I really like the way this stage looks. I love this stage. It's really cool. When I was looking up uh, footage to decide whether I wanted to get into this game, this stage was the one that um, sort of brought me over. Sort of won me over and, and made me get the game. These guys as well, if you don't kill them quick enough, they shoot those little ice projectiles, which you saw happen to me just then. Um, they're not too hard to deal with, but it is always annoying, because basically... You won't progress until all the enemies are cleared, which includes projectiles. Kaz unlucky again there. The pattern of seven. Still clears it though. I think I got six every time. So yeah, coming up to mostly the end of this stage now. There's only two more screens, I think. Kaz getting a life up there, which I didn't. Damn, Kaz with seven again. Unfortunate. I also got seven, though. Okay, I was wrong. So, yeah, he cleared the last two enemies of the stage. I'm still dealing with those, and then uh, we're both going to head into the boss. She's basically like a big serpent. Her weak point is her entire um, upper half. So, she's got three attacks. One is she'll sort of be surrounded by some little tornadoes. This one she always opens with, very similar to the, the uh, previous boss with the Meteors. Uh, basically, if you can clear that red health bar quick enough, she... Um, yeah, the, the projectiles will disappear. That... Um, the Tornadoes as well, or Whirlpools, I guess, they act like sort of shields. So, the quickest one is the one with the projectiles, by far. Uh, which, very luckily, I'm getting a lot of. Kaz is dealing with the other kind of attack, which is super annoying. She'll swim around in a pretty random pattern, and I still really can't tell when you can and can't shoot her. Um, I got kind of lucky. I think I only saw that attack twice. But yeah, it's way harder to hit versus where she's standing right now. You just have to shoot the same spot. So getting that projectile attack... Yeah, look, I'm getting it again. So lucky. So I got hugely lucky on this boss. It was really good. Um, Kaz just about to clear. I am as well. Yeah, I, I guess I only really saw it like one and a bit times. And look at that, we're pretty much neck and neck heading into the last game. But I got that cheeky hardware advantage. I think the final boss as well is one where you'll really see... Um, a lot of the difference in our in our styles again with Kaz being a he's going for a one credit clear here so he's trying not to get hit for me I don't care if I'm taking hits because I'm not trying to get a one credit clear so I played this boss really really aggressively and he didn't and I think it was the the huge difference maker in our runs so again my cheeky little hardware advantage I'm getting in there that's slim ps2 buff so this is the first phase of the final boss his whole torso is his weak point. So he always opens with this attack. He's basically like surrounded with bats. And he's gonna... You can shoot him the whole time. And these bats with the blue auras, they are ones that can hit you. So you'll see Kaz very carefully taking them out on the way in. Me? I don't care. Um, this attack as well, he's sort of far away. And then he starts moving. And if you shoot him, he changes direction. Kaz getting the same attack again though. Which is the best one that we want. Um, this as well, my arm started to give out a bit and my rate of fire drastically decreased. <laughs> Actually, I'd say this one's the fastest. This attack's the fastest. It's kind of the same thing, um, but he's he's closer to you, so he's an easier target. Yeah, much of the same here. 
Kaz getting a little lucky with the boss RNG. I took yet another continue. This boss as well seems to be one of the only ones who doesn't have like a limit on how often they can take damage. So you can really drain his uh, his health fast if you're like me and you've got like a good rate of fire. So yeah, I'm heading into the second phase of the boss. Kaz still on the first, unfortunately. So this one as well is another one where like RNG plays a huge factor. He's got a huge array of moves that he can use. I think he's got four or five different moves that he can use here. Um, so the first one that he's opening with, he turns red and flies towards you in a weird pattern. Kaz getting something different. That's one where he shoots six projectiles at you, which you have to clear. Um, this, similar to the, the stage five boss, he's got those two like little whirlwinds. This one as well with the meteors over on Kaz's screen is, I believe, the slowest. Because you can't attack him until he pops up in the second portal. So you really want anything but that, basically. You can make any of the other ones work. I think I took a hit there. Yep, unfortunate. So he spins three times and then you shoot, shoot him a bunch. That's it. Yeah, this one, I, I, I can't decide if it's fast or slow. I'd need to sit down and time it all out. Um, but I think the best one you want is the Whirlwinds one. You can see I'm about to take a huge amount of damage here. Yep. About to lose another continue. Obviously Kaz playing way more carefully because he wants the one credit clear. But again, I don't care about a one credit clear yet. Maybe one day. Yeah, and here I think I'm going to lose another continue. Yep. And I also missed um, clearing one of those red health bars, which is really, really unfortunate here, because they matter so much. And I think I'm one hit off the final phase. One or two hits, yeah. Kaz getting better RNG than me here, for the most part. I keep getting this teleport. Okay, there we go. So I'm about to head into the final phase. Kaz is as well. Very, very close when you compare these. So this is the last phase. He basically just turns invisible and flies at you. You want to just kill him as quick as you can because when he's fully invincible, he... Uh, sorry, fully invisible, he can't take damage. So I guess he's also fully invincible. And I should be two hits off here. Kaz as well. It's such a close... Such a close two runs. And this should be the last hit for me. And time for me. And Kaz just so slightly behind. Um, Kaz's run is actually a 2741. He hit his final split late. And there we go. What a crazy... Like, again, you put them side by side. It's so back and forth. And right at the end, just me playing so much more aggressively and not caring if I took those hits. Um, it was definitely the difference maker. So yeah, super exciting comparison of runs. She changed us. If you still have a copy of this game in the gun, um, I don't think, aside from... I think as long as you're playing on a slim PS2, you should be fine. And even if you've got a fat PS2, I mean, Kaz's world record stood for like a year and a bit, so... I think um, there's a little bit more to it than just a hardware advantage, so... Uh, definitely get involved in the Time Crisis and House of the Dead discords if you, uh, if you are interested. So there it is, everyone. I hope you had a great time watching. If you enjoyed anything that you saw here today, uh, I stream primarily on Twitch and occasionally post on YouTube. Uh, and a huge thank you to Kaz for allowing me to use his video. He's a fantastic uh, light gun game player. He's got various world records in a bunch of games like Time Crisis and House of the Dead and so on. Uh, he also does a lot of other things like st uh, score attack and uh, like hitless runs and perfect runs, all that good stuff. Uh, and he posts those on YouTube a lot. So uh, all the appropriate links will be in the description and I hope to see you soon.